So this is your brain. Say hi. Okay, it's a representation of your brain. Brains don't have hands. They have lobes and other structures, which we'll get to. But I want to talk to you about your brain. You see, your brain is capable of incredible things. But I think a lot of times we can feel pretty down on our brains, on old thinky pinky here. We beat up on them, say bad things about our brain's abilities. You know, say we have trouble understanding a subject in school or solving problems or learning a new skill. It's easy to say, oh, I'm not smart. I'll always be this way. Hey, stop doing that. What we think of as intelligence, what we think of as smartness, is not fixed, is not stuck in one place, is not permanent. Your brain can improve. Your brain can grow. Come with me on a journey of discovery. Here we go, into the brain. Excuse me, coming in hot. This is a thing called a neuron. Oh, hey, welcome to the inside of your brain. A neuron is a brain cell. There's over a hundred billion of these things making up your brain. Put it this way, there are over 13 times more neurons in your skull than there are human beings on Earth. A lot of them. They're the cells that help you think. Mind you, a single neuron, and let's call her Nellie. Hi, Nellie the neuron. Nellie, on her own, can't do all the thinking your brain needs to even pick up a glass of water. Fortunately, she's got friends. There's Dendrite Dave. There's Alonzo the Axon, there's Magna Myelin, and look, little Sally Synapse! So teensy tiny. Your brain behaves like a muscle. If you're serious about lifting weights, right, and you keep it up on a regular basis for a long period of time, weeks, months, years, you're going to develop muscles. But you don't grow muscles by doing nothing. It takes effort. It takes struggle, repeated failures, in fact. You mess up, and then you learn, and then eventually you manage to jump the log or whatever problem you're trying to solve. Wait, we've lost focus here. Back to neurons. When you struggle, your neurons are struggling too, and that's important because when neurons struggle, they lean on each other. They make connections. They start to form this densely connected network inside your brain, allowing little jolts of electricity to pass down them more and more efficiently. That's thinking faster. That's your brain getting smarter. That's your brain muscle getting swole, kid. So the next time you say to yourself, I can't do this. I'm just too dense. Remember that brain density is your friend. In fact, the denser you are, the more connections between Nellie and her neuron pals that you've got inside your brain, the stronger and more powerful your thinking parts become. The more you work through your frustrations with the right learning strategies, the more your neurons get more used to working together, the closer you are to being that much smarter. Now get out there and do your best. Don't give up. Grow those brains. And remember, you can learn anything. So we've learned that it's important to keep working through your frustrations by using the right learning strategies. The more you work through your frustration, the more your brain grows, right? But it can be difficult to work through that frustration without a clear direction. That's why it's important to make SMART goals. It's an acronym. goes like this. Specific. Measurable. Actionable. Realistic. Timely. Because, look, you can wish all you want and say, one day I'm going to go to the moon. And you can want that like your life depended on it. But a wish is not a goal. An example of a moon plan that consists of SMART goals would go something like this. <clears throat> In 20 years, I will have studied enough physics and chemistry, flown jet planes in the Air Force, worked out four times a week, and gotten a job as an astronaut for NASA. And this will enable me to fly a spacecraft to the moon and put my feet on it for science reasons. Specific. Put your feet on the moon. Measurable. Are your feet touching the surface of the moon? Actionable. It is actionable, that is to say doable, to study physics and chemistry, enlist in the Air Force, and go to the gym. Realistic. It's hard, but it's not impossible to become an astronaut. Timely. Here's where more realism kicks in. You won't be able to go to the moon as an astronaut overnight. 20 years seems a little more reasonable. But let's take this back to a more sensible time scale and look at our friend Thinky Pinky. Hey, buddy. TP here is interested in pull-ups, wants to be able to lift their entire mass with just the arms, this one. But pull-ups are hard. So let's take a look at Thinky Pinky's reflection journal. <clears throat> Quote, I want to be able to do two consecutive pull-ups by the end of the year by practicing pull-ups at the gym three times per week. 
Why is this a smart goal? S is for specific. TP wants to work on pull-ups, and they're not interested in biking or weight training. There's one skill that Thinky Pinky wants to work on, and that's pull-ups. M is for measurable. What's the metric for TP's success? Two in a row. Two pull-ups, one right after the other. You've either done it or you haven't. Measurable. A is for actionable. Can it be broken down into individual tasks? Yeah. Going to the gym three times a week to practice feels very actionable indeed. R is for realistic. TP's not training to lift a car. Just some pull-ups. T is for timely. There's a time limit on this. Thinky Pinky wants to do this in a year's time. Altogether, that's a smart goal you got there, TP. With the power of persistence, smart goals, and the right kind of help, you can do anything you set your mind to. You can learn anything. Happy goal setting!